Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and today I'm going to show you how to build a haunted manor house in Minecraft. From the daunting gothic exterior of the house to the creepy details on the interior, this is the perfect spooky addition to make to your world with Halloween just around the corner. Anyway, let's bring the tone back to normal and brighten things up a little bit here and we can get started with some building. If you're building this in survival, you can also find a full list of materials down in the description below. The first thing we're going to do is find a 19 by 12 area to build in and place down these smooth stone blocks. The bottom of the rectangle which is currently missing a side is actually the front of the house, so just bear that in mind when it comes to location. So now coming to the front of the build, this side right here, we're just going to come to one of the sides and leave a gap of one, two, three, and four blocks, and then place another one of these smooth stone blocks, and then another one in diagonally. Then we can do the same on this side, so one, two, three, four, and on the fifth one, and in diagonally again, and then come forward once more diagonally and place in five more. So you basically have a little smiley face at the front. Very spooky, I know. You can then go ahead and place a stone brick block on top of all of these smooth stone blocks. And then we can add in the first staircase, which is just on one of the sides here. So what we're going to do is go ahead and place two stone brick blocks like that, with two slabs on the bottom half of the block like so. Then we'll have a full block here and here either side, another slab here, and another slab at the bottom. So we have this gradual climb up to the top. All we need to do then is grab some stone brick stairs and place two up here and two down there. So we get this staircase, which can then be copied round to the other side over here too. Now we can just step inside and what we're going to do is place a full stone brick block in each of the four corners just like that. And once we've got those placed down, very simply, we just want to add a line to connect all of them. You're basically bringing the rectangle in by one. Then we can place four more corner blocks and do it once more again. And once you've got all of that filled in, we can then go ahead and fill in this final bit at the front and then very quickly on this front row here, so on the side with our staircase, we just want to go ahead and place one, two, three, four, five on both of the sides and you should be left with three in the middle and that is essentially the space on the interior, so just leave it blank for now. At this point you can go around with some cracked stone bricks and maybe even some mossy stone bricks if you would like and just mix a few of them in with the full stone brick blocks. We're nearly done with the foundation here, we just have to add in our wall going around the outside. So that's going to be made out of andesite walls and we're going to start at the front bit right here in the middle. So we're just going to go from this top stair, so on the side of it, on this block right here, we're going to go in by three, same on this side, then two and then five across the front like so. And then essentially all we need to do is go all the way around on all of these outer blocks, all of the stone bricks and just place in an andesite wall. Just making sure you stick to the outside and follow the pattern all the way around. So you should at the moment have something looking like this. From that point we can then come to the four corners and we just want to extend these walls up by another one so just place another andesite wall on top of the one we already have there. Now we're just going to go around and add some chains on top of them for a little bit of added detail starting on the four corners and what we're going to do is add a chain on top and then one either side. Now you could use iron bars for this, I quite like the look of them on their own but as you can see on the corners here causes a bit of a problem but you might like the look of that more so feel free to use iron bars instead but personally I think the chains not only work better but also look a little bit better. We're going to be using them some more in the roof too. So we want to just do that for all four of the corners like so. Then for this front section, we're going to place a chain here so we have it on both sides of the staircase. We're going to have another one here and over here, two more here and then one in the center. As for the other three sides, we'll start on the two shorter ones for now. We just want to leave a gap of two and then another gap of two and then this should be a final gap of two. So we can just go ahead and place two more over here as well. And for the back, it's slightly different. So we're just going to start on one of the sides, leave another gap of two and another gap of two, then come over to this side and two more gaps of two. And in the middle here, you should have three walls instead of the usual two for all the others. 
So that is the foundation of the build all done. We are now ready to start work on the house itself. So we just want to grab some dark oak logs to begin with. And what we're going to do is place one of those on all four corners like so. And what we can then do is going inwards from all four, going by one, two, three. And on the fourth block, we're just going to place a log. So there's two at the front. And then we also want to do two more at the back leaving a five block gap in the middle. Same again on both of the shorter sides. Should be five blocks in between them. At that point, you can go ahead and extend them up by an additional four more blocks for a total of five blocks high on every single one. Once you have all eight pillars here built, we can add two tall ones at the front. So we just want to come in diagonally by one block like that. And these two are going to be 10 blocks high. So we've already got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Same over here, making sure they are at the same height. Then we can go round the back here at the top. And we're just going to add one, two, three coming off the back of both of them. And then another line of three in the front. We can then count up one, two, three, four, five, and on the sixth block here, do the same. So that is three blocks from the top log here. Just add three more there, and then three more out the front. Now we can just grab a temporary block. Doesn't matter what it is, it can be anything. I'm just going to use dirt here and get rid of it afterwards, just like that. And we're just going to have a line of logs for this time going up to the same level as well. This part down here is kind of going to be in the interior, hence why we haven't built it all the way down to the bottom as it's going to be covered up by the ceiling. But lastly, we just want to add a line of three logs going across the back like that. So yeah, this looks a little bit funky at the moment, but bear with me. We're going to build the roof now and hopefully it should start to look a bit more house-like. So we're just going to come to one of the sides here, either the left or the right. And we're going to start by adding in two upside down dark oak stairs on the top of these pillars right here. We can also go ahead and do the same round the back as well. And then on the outside, we just want to add a line of dark oak stairs going all the way across like that. And then from the two stairs we have at the front and the back, we just want to place in an ups or a regular stair, sorry, then an upside down one and essentially do the same thing again until we get to the very center and have an upside down one like that. Same again over here. So two regular stairs, two upside down stairs, two regular and one upside down. Now we can come up to the top of the roof here in the center, just above this upside down stair. And we're going to add a regular stair facing inwards on both sides with an upside down one coming off the front. And then we'll have a dark oak trap door on top of that stair. And then you can crouch and place another one in front of the trap door. And while we're up here, we can also go ahead and stick a chain underneath it. Of course, crouch to place that with a lantern underneath that chain. We'll do the same around the front too, two trap doors, chain and a lantern. And then from the inside here, from this stair, we just want to add one, two and three more stairs. Same again for the other one. And then a dark oak plank in the middle with a dark oak trap door on top. On this side down here where we have all of the stairs, we just want to place a dark oak trap door on both of the corner stairs and essentially just leave a gap, place another, leave a gap, place another and leave a gap and place one more. To fill in the roof, we're going to be using some deep slate tile blocks and we're going to start on this outer side here where we just place the trap doors. So we're going to start with a deep slate tile stair on top of the two logs on the outer side. Then we're going to go to a full block, then a stair, then a full block, essentially just alternating between the two. Then on the next row up, we're going to start on a full block this time, then a stair, and you get the idea. Just switch back and forth between them to create this alternating pattern, which is just a little bit different to having stairs all the way across. And if you would like to, totally optional, but you can mix in some cracked deep slate tile in replace of the full blocks, but you don't have to. It's a similar thing over on this side, except it conjoins to this part of the roof, which doesn't really exist yet. So it gets a little bit confusing, but bear with me. We'll start on the top level here in the same way as we did for the other side with a full block. And we just want to alternate them until we get over to the other side here. So a stair and a full block. Then from this side, so we're at the back of the build currently, we'll start with the stair again. Same as what we did for the bottom level on that side then a full block and then come over to the other side and place a stair 
then a full block, then a stair, then a full block, and we just want to leave this one empty. And on top of this full block that we just placed down, we'll have a deep slate tile stair, which should curve that one round a little bit to the side. And then we just want to have one more stair over here facing towards us. And essentially we can flip it over to the other side and copy everything we've just done for the other section of the roof. With the two roof sections now finished, we can go ahead and connect them around the back of the build here. So we're going to start by grabbing five dark oak stairs and just placing them in between these two upside down stairs. And then we're going to do a similar thing as to what we did for the sides and just place some trap doors with a single block in between them all. Then we can go ahead and from this stair over to here, add a line of deep slate tile slabs. Then the next line, we have a full block here, so we're going to go stair and just alternate like we did before over to this side. And then you can see we have a stair here, so we're going to go full block to stair and do the same over to this side. And of course, if you're choosing to mix in some cracked tiles, go ahead and put them down too. So that is this section of the roof all done. We just now need to finish our tower at the very top here. So what we're going to do is grab some more dark oak blocks, starting with some stairs. And we're going to place two of them on each corner facing outwards like that. Upside down, of course. And then we're also going to have one more in the middle on all four sides. In the remaining gaps, which is just two on either side, we're going to have a dark oak slab to create this square going all the way around. And then what we need to do on top of all of these stairs is we're going to have a dark oak trap door. So that should be three on all of the four sides. And then lastly, on top of the slabs that we have here, we just want to go ahead and place another slab on top of it to create this outline where we can put some deep slate inside of it and on top of it. Starting with a full ring of full deep slate tile blocks on top of all of the logs that we have placed down. Then we can grab some deep slate tile walls and we're going to add them to all four of the corners as well as one in the center of all four sides. Then on the remaining blocks just to fill it in we'll have some more solid blocks. And on top of those solid blocks we want to add in a tile slab on all eight of them and then we'll have one more full block in between the slabs. So at the moment you should have something that looks like this. Next up, we can go ahead and place a full block in between both of these two slabs here in the corner and then a wall on top of the outer full block that we placed down in the previous clip. And then we also want to go ahead and just place a full block behind these deep slate walls that we've just placed down. So we should have this just to take a quick step back. And on top of these full blocks, we're going to have two walls this time, just like that. And on top of these four blocks in the corners by the slabs, we want to have two more four blocks that actually connect up to this wall over here. Then if we can just kind of jump on top of this point where we have these four blocks right here, we just want to add another one of those and then two more and then one more wall on the very top. And you may honestly want to just leave the roof looking like this. I think it looks pretty good. But what I actually think looks a little bit better is adding some extra spiky bits on top of all of the walls here. So it's quite a lot of walls that we have on the open here, but I'll show you each individual one. We're going to start off with a fence for now, a dark oak fence on all four walls in the corners. Then we go up by a block and we got four more here on the center of all of the sides. Then we got four more here on this inner square, four more on all of the sides and one more at the top. So once you've got all of those fences placed down, just go ahead and slap a chain on top of every single one. So in the end, you have something that looks like this, which I think is great. It goes from a regular looking roof to something that looks that extra bit spooky, which I think is very well suited to our haunted mansion here. So now what we're going to do whilst we're up the top, we're actually going to figure out all of the walls for the top of our tower. So you might just need to grab some temporary blocks to do this, but we're going to kind of make our way into the center here. And what we're going to do is add a temporary block in all four of the corners. So one in diagonally from these outer logs. And we just want to place in three strip dark oak logs on top of all of them. Then if we just get rid of our temporary blocks here and take a look from the outside, this is what it should look like. Basically just some logs in the corners, pushed back by a block for an extra bit of depth. 
Now we just want to grab some strip dark oak wood, which is the same as the log texture, just without this top part right here. And we're using that because it looks a little bit better next to the glass panes. Quick side note, these are meant to be light stained glass panes, not white stained glass panes. It's not that big a deal. I just think the light gray looks a little bit better. I change it afterwards later in the video. So we just use the front of the build as an example here. We're going to have a glass pane there, a white stained one. Just head inside and we're going to place a log or a wood block, I should say, underneath it and on top of it, which as you can see, looks nice and seamless here. All of the logs are facing the same direction and you don't have this top texture. Whereas as you would, if you just place the log sideways, Yes, you don't see the log texture, but it's not as pretty looking as it is if all of the logs are all facing the same direction. So just go ahead and do that for the front window. And then we also want to repeat it for the left and the right side too. So two more windows and four more wood blocks underneath and above them. As for the side around the back of the build, it's a little bit smaller in space, so we don't actually have room for a window. So instead, we're going to make a small one, which is actually the same size technically with some slabs. So we'll start with a spruce slab at the top, then leave half a block and another half a block and place another one here. So it is actually the same size. You just can't fit a full block in there, but it looks like one from a distance. And then we just grab some spruce trap doors and we just add one in front of this bottom slab and one either side and three along the top. So it should look like that. For the left and the right hand side, we're going to add some extra details here with some spruce blocks, starting with two spruce fences either side, upside down stair at the top on top of them and a slab in the middle. Then we just pop around to the other side and do the exact same thing. So two fences, two fences, two stairs and a slab. As for the front, we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to start by adding a spruce stair in every corner. The top two are going to be upside down. And then what we can do is grab some spruce trap doors and we're just going to fold them shut on the two side and lay them flat on the top and the bottom to create a circular window. Coming down to this section here, which is actually the front of the house, how we're going to get into the building. We're going to start with two strip spruce logs on either side at the top with a spruce stair upside down in the center and an oak trap door underneath it. Then two upside down stairs facing towards each other with a trap door in the center and then flat against the logs on either side, we're going to have two spruce trap doors. So it's a little bit like our window at the top here, just without the stairs on the bottom. So it's more of an archway. Then we just want to step inside and on these three blocks, we're going to place down a polished deep slate slab. This is what most of the interior floor is going to be made out of, hence why we're using these three blocks. But we're going to place a dark oak door right in the center there. And then we just want to crouch and we're going to jump and press two more on either side and then three along the top. And we're going to fold all of them shut. So from the outside, it kind of looks like one big doorway. So that is the central tower all done pretty much. Now we're going to come to one of the two sides. They're exactly the same, so it doesn't matter which one you start on, but I'm going to begin here over on the left. So the very first thing we're going to do is just grab some more of our polished deep slate slabs. We're using slabs, by the way, instead of full blocks, mainly because it's just a little bit cheaper and you can save on some resources. So have three here across the front and the back, and then three more on the side. And then essentially what we want to do here is on the front and the back in the center, we're going to add a dark oak wood. So that's the one without the top texture. And then we want one more in the center here on the side. The rest of the blocks on top of the deep slate can be the regular logs. On top of the wood blocks, we're going to add two light gray stained glass pane windows. And then next to them all on the remaining of the regular logs, we're just going to add two more of them. We'll add another wood block on top of all of the windows. And then finally, we'll add the other blocks as regular logs. Coming to the front of the build, we're going to add in three horizontal dark oak logs going all the way across. And then we're just going to go all the way up to the top here. So pressing your head right into that top block. And we're just going to place down three barrels and we're placing it this way up so we get the side texture that's why we're pressing our head all the way up otherwise it's going to be sideways so just make sure you're all the way up and press it down like that and you should get the side texture 
Then next to this stair and this stair, we'll have a dark oak trap door with one more in the middle and another one on top of that central trap door. You can also go ahead and copy this round to the back of the build too. And once you've got that done for the front and the back, we can then come back round to the front of the build. And what we're going to do next to the window here is just place two spruce fences with an upside down stair on top of either of them with a spruce slab in the middle. Underneath the fences, we'll have an upside down stair with a trapdoor in the center and a flower pot on top. As for what to put inside the flower pots, I wouldn't recommend just a regular nice pretty colourful flower. I would recommend something like a wither rose for example. I think that is very well suited. It just looks like a dead flower. Very nice with the haunted mansion. But that's a bit hard to get a hold of. So maybe a dead bush, the nether mushrooms, the nether roots or just regular mushrooms to give you some ideas if you can't really attain this. Which... Uh, you probably can't unless you're at the end game in your world, <laughs> I'll be honest. They are not that easy to get a hold of. As for around the back of the build, we're going to do a very similar thing, just changing it up slightly. So we're going to start with two stairs at the bottom upside down with a slab in the middle. Then we can have our flower pot with whatever inside of it. On the two sides, we're going to have two spruce trap doors folded shut against the dark oak logs. Then we'll have a spruce stair upside down in both corners and a spruce trap door in the center. And over here on the left hand side, the longer section, we're going to start by placing two barrels on either side just like that with three strip spruce logs on top of them. Then we'll have a slab right at the top in the middle here with two upside down stairs either side. And then along these three blocks, we're just going to have three spruce trap doors folded flat against all of them to make another archway. The final thing to do for this section is just add in some spruce buttons. So we have two round the front, two round the side, and then two round the back. And now you're ready to copy everything we've just done here over to the other side exactly the same. As for this central part around the back of the build, what we're going to do to begin with is grab some more deep slate polished slabs and then we're going to add three across the center here and just do what we did for the sides. So we'll start with the wood block, then two glass panes and another wood block and then we we'll just have four of the regular strip logs on either side. Then on these open spaces right here, we'll have a barrel on the floor facing upwards and then three of the stripped spruce logs going all the way up to the top. We'll have a spruce slab on the top and the bottom, then with two stairs along the side of both of those with two fences in between the two stairs. So that is the exterior of the build all done except from four final buttons to place down at the front of the entranceway here. Two at the bottom at the very lowest block and then two up here just where that horizontal log is. And with that, the exterior is done. We can now head inside and start work on the interior. So the first thing you can do is grab some deep slate polished slabs, some dark oak slabs and some oak slabs, unless a sheep has made its way inside of your house. And in that case, you need to dispose of it. So now you can cover up your hole to the void, possibly place some torches under here to stop spiders spawning, and then you can grab some oak slabs, and we're going to face the doorway here, turn around 180 degrees, and look to the left. This is where we're going to place six oak slabs, and on the other side is where we're going to place six dark oak slabs, and essentially the rest of the open blocks can be filled in with some polished deep slate slabs. And yes, we do have some stone brick on show, that's fine, we're going to be building some blocks on top of it, so you won't be able to see it regardless. So it should all be one of three blocks on show for the floor of the house. Next up, we can look at the doorway here, and what we're going to do is grab some strip dark oak logs, and we're just going to place down five of those all the way to this log right here on both of the two sides. Then we're going to add a strip dark oak wood on top of those two dark oak trap doors, so you don't get the log texture on show. Then we're going to crouch and place a spruce trap door just on the top of this oak trap door and then have three logs across the top like that. We can then turn around and what we're going to do in front of these five dark oak logs is place five more dark oak logs on both of the sides just to bring it in a little bit. 
We can then grab some regular strip dark oak logs and add five more next to the ordinary logs and then three more across the top like that. Now we'll try to sort out this mess of a ceiling. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab some spruce stairs and from these two logs right here, we're just gonna have a line of four going all the way over from one side of the other. Same over here on this side, four more upside down stairs. Then we'll add four spruce trap doors just in front of those stairs and then four spruce slabs in front of those trap doors, once again on both of the sides. And then we just wanna add two more spruce trap doors at the back of the build. So leave these two empty towards the front. And for these smaller rooms, we're just gonna have three slabs and then three trap doors. Same again over here as well. Now we are gonna make use of our tower and actually build a ladder going up into it so we can get a nice view. So what we're gonna do to begin with is grab some dark oak logs and we're just gonna jump and place that first one there and bring it all the way down to the bottom of the floor. And then we can go ahead and place ladders on all of them except this top block here. So if we just crouch on the ladder and stop for now, we'll add a strip dark oak log here as well as to both of the sides. So if you look straight up, should look a little bit neater now. Then we can just pop on top of the ladder here and then we're gonna jump and place a spruce trap door like that, so on the bottom of this block. So essentially you can climb up the ladder here, stop on top, close the trap door and you got a bit of a floor to stand on and look out of the window. Now we're not gonna build anything in the very top of the tower here, but we do wanna stop mob spawning. So we're just gonna maybe flick our floor up so we can see a bit more, place a torch down anywhere. And then we'll also place a temporary block here with another spruce plank or spruce slab on top of it where we can then hang a lantern to nicely light up the top of the tower here. So it's not awfully dark up here at nighttime. Coming back down to the bottom level now, we just need to add in some room dividers so we can separate the different floor blocks that we have. So starting on the side with the dark oak wood on the floor, we're gonna add four trap doors along the top. Then we're gonna add three here, then two here, and another two here. So looks weird at the moment, I know. <laughs> but if we fold them all shut, it starts to look a little bit better and actually divides the room. And then of course on this block, we can have our dark oak door. We're leaving these three open for now because there's actually some blocks that are gonna be placed there, but it'll look a lot better once they're actually in position. We can do a very similar thing over here, starting with four once again, and then we're gonna do four more this time, and then we'll just have two sets of two like that. So it's essentially exactly the same as the other side over here, just with two blocks missing instead of three. And of course, don't forget your doorway to actually get inside. So now it's time to furnish the three rooms. And if you would like, you can take the reins and design this yourself, possibly lean a bit more into the haunted aspect of it, do some creepier things. It's kind of up to you. If not, you can follow along here. So the first thing we're gonna do is just add a spruce fence right here on the back of our ladders with a lantern underneath because we need some lighting in here desperately. It's super dark at the moment. We'll get mob spawning if you don't add any sort of light in. Then over on this side here, we'll have our three bookshelves that are going in those three blocks I mentioned earlier. Two on the side with a flower pot and I'm gonna put a dead bush in this one. And over here on this side where we have the two missing trap doors, we're gonna add a barrel facing towards us, a barrel facing to the side, a barrel facing upwards and in a chest on top of that one. Over on this wall here, opposite the entrance way, the first thing we're gonna do is just place down two paintings here on either side. We wanna get both of the two variants, minor custom paintings. I actually think the regular ones might be a bit more well suited in this case, but I'm not taking a resource back off for it. <laughs> so two paintings there either side, and then we wanna add a spruce trap door right here. So kind of in the middle of this painting with a flower pot and I'm gonna put a crimson fungus in that one. And then we'll have another spruce trap door here as another shelf. And on top of this one, might just need to pillar up to actually reach it. We're gonna crouch and place in a pointed dripstone just for some sort of decoration added into this creepy house. And then lastly, we just wanna stick an armor stand right in front of this window. 
As for what to put on the armor stand, I've just dyed some leather clothing fully black here to create this creepy outfit. And then if you're able to, a wither skeleton skull on top, if not just a black cap will be fine. And you could even possibly rotate this facing out the window to scare anybody peeking in, could be cool. Once again, just a creepy looking decoration that you can actually walk through and isn't really going to obscure too much of your walking space here. So that's the main room and tower all done. We can now come to the left room over here with the oak planks on the floor. And this is going to be a very small and cramped bedroom, but we're going to fit everything in just fine. So we'll have our bed here with the pillow facing towards the front of the house, a barrel facing towards us with something inside of a flower pot on top. And then over here, we're going to have three bookshelves like that three candles all placed together and of course light them with the flint and steel and then we'll just stick an amethyst bud as another cool decoration on the top bookshelf. Over on the other side with the dark oak plank room this is going to become a witch's work area or something creepy like that. <laughs> we'll have a cauldron filled up with water with a stone cutter beside it because I mean look at that that looks like it could do something scary. Then on the other side, we'll have a barrel and a chest just opposite the stone cutter. Next to the barrel, just on the top of this block, we'll have a spruce trap door with a brewing stand on top of that one. And then over here, just above the stone cutter on this block, we'll have another trap door shelf with a mushroom inside of a flower pot. And of course, what else better is there to add in to a haunted house to make it seem haunted? than cobwebs. <laughs> so we're just going to add some of these in. You can place them however you want. Just maybe don't put them like right in front of the doorway or something. That's going to get really annoying to walk through. So if you want to just see how exactly I place them down, every single one, I'll show you, but it, it doesn't matter. It's not perfect. Don't worry. You can place these however you'd like. We're going to have one under this painting, one above the mushroom, one, one block above the chest, just like that. And we'll crouch and place one in front of this flower pot. Inside the potion room, we'll have one above the cauldron and one above the chest. And over in the bedroom, we'll have one above the bed and one above the flower pot. Of course, you're welcome to add in more. It's entirely up to you. But there we go, everybody. That is how you build my haunted manor house in Minecraft. I really hope you enjoyed watching and this tutorial has helped you out. Of course, happy Halloween to all of you celebrating. Be safe out there. I hope you have a great time. And if you're staying in to play Minecraft, well, lucky you. I will probably be doing the same thing. <laughs> Thank you for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time. Bye for now.